Check one, two, one, two. What's up, everybody? This is uh, DJ Divine Justice, aka uh, DJ One Bitty Controller. Is all you need. Um, this is just a continuation on my uh, APC20 sample deck mapping because uh, I figured out how to get multiple pages out of a sample deck. So I have three pages. One is for track decks or four deck control, one is for sample decks and one is for effects. Um, on this first one, um, I guess just to start it off, this works on as load to uh, load to deck, and then when load to deck is engaged, these two buttons will scroll up in your um, in your tree, and this button all the way on the far right will expand and collapse, so I can go down. Uh, then this knob will scroll through your tracks and these top four will um, will load tracks um, a lot faster if you have a faster computer but it does the job um, so let's get four tracks in there just by random um, then push this button to go back out of that now you saw when that happened it lit up and it let me know that this track, all three of these have one cue point. Um, as you can see, that that one, that one, and that one are lit up. And then this track has two cue points because you have A, B, C, and D. And then over here, it's divided up into four, two rows each of A, B, C, and D. And this first cue point, all my first cue points go to load, so I've made them be a different color. Um, it's just they'd be easier to see. Um, so you can see uh, works as cue point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Also, when this is engaged, like as a shift mode, um, these buttons then turn into bend back and forth, bend down, bend up. Um, this actually takes the tempo up and down, and um, when sync is engaged, um, normally this button is sync, but then it will set this also as the master. Um, sync also starts it playing, so if this track over here, for instance, wasn't also already at 128, but was down at 125, whenever I press sync, it'll start it playing, and it'll sync it to whatever the master tempo is. So this one's 128, this one's 120, whatever. I press the sync button, it starts it playing and syncs it. Also because this button is engaged, it, it thought to switch that to the master. I take that off. Um, leave it on, they'll switch this other one back to the master, take it off, it'll just turn sync on and off, but this one's already playing and already synced. Um, when I'm on this page, I have three pages of faders. Um, this first one is four volumes and four filters, so these two work as the volumes for those two tracks that are playing. And then right next to it you got the filters for those tracks. I can turn them on and off. Bring the filters down. Bring it up for that track. Um, then I have this page which works as EQs. So in the um, middle I have the lows, the mids, and the highs. Then I also have this fader, which, um, along with this button, works as the key. So you see, it brought the key way down, or brought the key way up. Um, what you can do is leave it in the middle. And then this button, these two buttons, will go down by one octave. So it's basically just taking that key down.
uh, just by one. Um, and so then also, that's for the top two decks. If you want to do the next two decks down, this button is basically the same thing, where you got your lows, mids, and highs for C and D, and the same thing with the um, with the key on and off. Um, I usually use it in this mode a lot. Um, then it just goes back. I turned this into a crossfader. I did have it as the master volume, but I found uh, it's just better not to have a master volume button when you're moving a whole bunch of things around. Um, when load to deck is not opened, then this button, this knob works as the dry wet for the loop recorder. And this row of buttons gives you record, play, size, change, delete. Like I have one in there, so I'll press delete and remove it. Um, it can change the size of the loop recorder. Um, you can record into it. So if I've got a this dropping over here, I can press record when that drops and starting to record that loop. And it'll record it once and stop recording. And you can see that light went off when it stopped recording. So now we're just listening to what's coming through in the loop recorder. Um, and then you can add something from another track or however you want to mess with the loop recorder. And then it just cycles through at one, two, three, four, as far as dividing the beat into four beats and showing where you, where you are in the loop recorder. Um, if these are sample decks, then it gives you a slightly different uh, functionality. Um, as soon as you load something into the sample deck, the lights will change. So if I'm over in the um, content for loop recorders, as you can see, as soon as I put one in, that first light lights up, um, second light lights up, third light lights up, fourth light, and it'd be the same thing on over here on this other side. Or it should be once I'm finished doing it the right oi, way. Oi, oi. Now that shows is play. Oi. This is kind of just playing, triggering through the loops. And this would actually loop them. And that turns them off because that sounds, uh, sounds ridiculous. Um, it's kind of better if you have uh, loops going. I just want to throw a loop in there, man. What's the problem? There we go. The loops are a little better. Um, so that's pretty much it for that first page. The second page is just for sample decks. So you can see I have play already going. Um, and then all of these are solid, letting you know that there's a loop in them. This one is flashing because it's the only one out of all the sample decks that's a one-shot. Um, so you can just hit this button and it'll change it back and forth if you want to loop whatever one shot is. Usually when you load things, they're already um, set as a one shot or a loop. Um, like this one's a loop because you can see it's got a little green looped little thing and then these things are one shots because they have that one arrow. If you ever want to change it, you can just right click on something that's... Um, uh, you can't quite see it. There's an option right there where you can set type to one shot or set type to be a loop. And if I set this to be a loop, 
it'll um, play as a loop, obviously. Um, on this page, I have a bunch of modifiers. I already made a video about that, so it'll probably be easier for you to just watch the one on sample decks. Um, these are all modifiers like load, play, mute, retrigger, erase, and load to deck. And then these are all the um, sample decks, like this is 3132334414244344. So if I want to play this sample deck, press play, and it starts playing and cycles through. And lets me know what's happening, where the beat is, and when. So that's pretty cool. And then I can go back and stop playing it, play it again. Um, mute does obviously mutes it on and off and then this one lets you know that it's muted and also works as a temporary mute um, retrigger lets you retrigger it let's go ahead and take mute off stop that one um, another cool part is that on these, I have it so that these will half and then reset and sync. So you'll see this won't cycle all the way through, it'll only cycle through half, half it again. Just press reset to get back into it, and it cycles right back in where it's supposed to be. Um, and then you can actually see it getting smaller. On this page, I have uh, two knobs, two settings for the uh, faders. This will be volume. So you see I've got those two going, brings down the volume, brings the volume back up. This row is my row of filters on and off. Um, so if I go to filters and do these same two, and it won't take over until it gets to the mid. And see it brings the filters on both of them down, brings it all the way back up. And then once you get to the top, you just take them out. Um, and you can watch the rest of the video for all the rest of the things that it'll do. Um, I can add these two things to what's going on in the um, loop recorder. Stop these from playing. Then now we're still just hearing what's coming through the loop recorder. And then this is the volume for the loop recorder. Um, then this third page is um, for my effects. I still have to fix the lights so that the last one doesn't carry over. Um, these four buttons work as turning the effects on and off for each track. So you can see right now they're all on. You can turn them off. And then if uh, Beats Playing it has kind of like a MIDI fighter effect. Then I made it so that these effects 
will trigger one, two, and three. And then you can change one, two, and three's effects over here manually with these knobs. So you can kind of play it, which I can't really quite do because I need this other hand. Um, whereas these are just mapped to set amounts. And then these also, all the way on this side, are your complete dry wet for the effects. I think I think that's it. Yep, these load when you're over back in um, filter mode or track mode, and these also work as your cue, so you can cue tracks. Um, and um, that's it. I'm always adding stuff, so now that I've figured out how to toggle between the layers, then if I think of something else, I need another page, at least now I know how to do it. So thanks to everybody who um, asked for the TSI for the sample deck one, and uh, hopefully this one will be even better. Uh, thanks for watching, DJ Divine Justice, as always, practice and enjoy, peace.